with chemotherapy, um, it's actually quite harmful to the body and there are lots of harmful side effects, which is why we feel cancer immunotherapy is a much better way of combating cancer because not only is it safer and more effective, it's just generally, it's much more easier on the person. Astronomers actually use the principle of the Doppler effect as it applies to light to study the respective motion of stars to the Earth. So here you can see that stars appear both red and blue. We can't separate science from our life. You, any, anything you ask, there is a question to it. Why sky is blue? Why uh, scattering of light is happening? Why uh, you know this flower is looking uh, this color? And what are the chemical reactions happening in our body? So it's just part of our life. We can't. I don't. I don't think so. We can separate science and life. One thing that Inventure does very well is providing opportunities for the students because they get tremendous exposure, uh, building confidence in how they express themselves. And I think what we are going to be sort of working towards is building this depth of science. In InVenture, we have thematic curriculum in primary. Uh, same way in middle school also, we have problem-based learning approach. So we wanted to introduce something exciting for senior school students as well. So we brainstormed as a team and came up with an idea of science beyond curriculum, uh, where we allow students to explore the topic beyond the syllabus and um, enjoy the process as well. Our main focus was on uh, scientific communication and uh, scientific writing and uh, they have done a wonderful job. Our project is investigating the effects of pollution on Bangalore lakes and finding a model that we can use to, um, for maintaining good lake hygiene. These computers are like supercomputers and they store much more data and we're figuring out how they store more data. So my project was on the duality of light, how light exhibited both wave and particle behaviors. So I didn't really have a hypothesis per se, but more a broader question or answer, which is what is light? So my project was calculating the amount of iron in an iron supplemental pill and comparing it to the amount listed on the, like on the pill bottle to see if it's accurate. I was able to go beyond because I wasn't limited by, oh, we have to learn this for the curriculum. I was able to go beyond, go in depth, in depth, find out what interested me. It was really interesting, especially learning about the Doppler effect in astronomy. That was my favorite. It taught us that we need to repeat our experiments many, many, many times to get a steady value. Um, the research itself was a good experience. It gave us some exposure to the idea of research, which will obviously be beneficial for college, but then also it taught us more about our lakes, which is a part of our city that we live in, and we really think it's important because, you know, it's where we're from. The topics which the students have come, it's way beyond uh, their curriculum. Uh, we were so amazed to see their interest in varied fields like dark matter, antimatter, uh, and bio batteries. It was so versatile. When it comes to beyond science, right, it's a place where we widen the horizon. So the, today, it was so amazing to see them, you know, different topics. And I had uh, one of my grade seven student uh, came in and said, ma'am, what is this? Nothing related to what is in my textbook. They are all going very deep. I said, wow, that's what we wanted, right? So that's a great success. Oh, I mean, I don't know. It's very difficult to put it into words, but I think it just makes one feel so excited about the potential future. Hope. I would say one of the biggest things is scientific thinking, thinking rationally, but at the same time, being human beings. How does science help you be rational and human at the same time?
because science i think it's the basis of everything right science Mm. without science we won't understand a lot of stuff science is important for students to understand a lot of natural processes happening in the world right while classroom learning is really fun and obviously effective sometimes that can get a little boring or sometimes there are some students that it doesn't reach maybe practical stuff or stuff outside of school helps more so i think it's really good that inventors are trying to trying to teach students who don't learn the conventional way and trying to teach students to go deeper to find stuff that interests them I think our learning was like how to research and what's the systematic way to research because initially like we saw some videos and we got really intimidated and like fancy equations and stuff like that which we didn't understand uh, so we tried to look at the basic concept and how to summarize that in a paper and teach it in a simple way I learned like about myself I'm really particular <laughs> about how I do things like I remember when we were doing the lab experiment um I had I had looked up like the exact set of steps we needed to do for the experiment and I like made sure I followed it to like to the T. So it was I didn't think I was a perfectionist. If an experiment does not go to plan, there are just new learnings that you can understand from the experiment. The will power they had in some of the students, you know, at times like uh, they used to tell like, you know, no ma'am it's not happening. Can we just, uh, you know, think of something else? Then no, no, no. This far we have come and we are almost there. We can make it. So you now each team members the, uh, they were motivating each other and there was excellent collaboration happening among them. So I came to the conclusion that this duality, the way that the universe is so complex and infinite that it's something we can't categorize. Is it isn't something we can pin down. So I think my conclusion, my reflection is that we should stop approaching things with the aims of categorizing and defining but more to learn to accept. Yeah, I do think so, especially with stem cell research. I feel like there's so much exposure for research nowadays. Like it's honestly limitless. Like there have been so many um projects today on quantum science that really intrigue me as well. Like it's literally limitless. There is a lot to learn from these kids. the way they think the way they communicate the way they work that's all amazing even you know uh, night 10 30 11 o'clock they used to send their doubts and uh, the effort they have put in along with the uh, the regular uh, academic uh, you know demands they had that was really okay this is though it is beyond uh, uh, the exams and the uh, requisite of the curriculum they had they gave their 100% as an educator i really feel proud to be a person where i was able to widen the horizon open the open the door for them to think more learn more work more and also definitely this is going to be a starting point since they're going to get into their colleges right and it's going to be a great experience for them in future i think it shows us that like we can uh like whatever we're curious about we can learn about that and even if something may seem daunting we can understand it and uh and actually understand it even though like we may not be as uh, like the people who are actually researching we may not be the same age or level so uh i think it empowers you to be able to learn stuff like that by yourself harnessing and maximizing the enthusiasm for science you know building that and building the bridges between science ethics and society i think that's something else we'll also work towards but just taking it beyond the curriculum applying what they've learned in classroom to real world experiences i think it's very exciting for all of us